Our next guest is a nine-time winner on the PGA and Champions Tour. He's got a uh, he hit big putts on CBS to win playoffs and lived to tell about it. He missed putts on playoffs. He's lived to tell about that. It's our pleasure to welcome our friend Dan Forsman to the Wise Guys here in studio. Welcome. Thanks, David. Good to be with you and Blaine. See, the table has turned now. We're, now, we're not at the golf course yeah. at your wheelhouse. Now you're in our wheelhouse. Where you dominated us the last time we played. Or every time. I'm in over my head, I can tell you that. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> So what were the what are you what were you most nervous about coming into this interview? Just when I got here, how professional you guys are! I love the set. I love the all your staff and everybody. No, a lot goes on behind the scenes. Did There's you notice all the Big Twelve stuff uh, up on the, on the walls? We got cool. all the Big Twelve teams up on the walls, and Blaine's got a cheerleader on the microphone. Yeah, she <laughs> she took a spill earlier, uh, but we've got her secured. Because she's now. balanced. No, it's like if she's not where she's supposed to be, that's bad karma. It's not a big event unless there's cheerleaders. Looks like some of the ones I saw Saturday night at the game. So you were at the game. What'd you think? Unbelievable. Phenomenal. Stayed the whole night. Got home late, of course, but it was worth it. Can you imagine trying to hit a putt with that student section causing all that mayhem? It was incredible. Their quarterback had to make some passes, which were tough to do and all that noise. And I was thinking, uh, what would that be like having to hit an eight-foot putt to win a tournament in that environment? Well, it might work on the live tour because they, they kind of thrive. <laughs> yeah, they do kind of like whatever that. T- whatever. Well, the PGA whatever. tour, the marshals would have their signs up, and they'd probably say, "Please, if you can't be quiet, you know, let this person play out." But that's the game of golf versus football. Yeah, golf's a quiet sport occasionally, but, but except it, for the the waste management open down in Phoenix, except doesn't for seem that, quiet. And yeah. I, you know, I've been to that. That doesn't seem quiet. When Tiger Woods is in the middle of it, it gets pretty loud. <laughs> yeah. When you tee off, and um, and you know that every time you hit the ball, someone's going to scream. Get in the hole, you know, because they all seem to do it. And sometimes it seems like they do it before you actually hit the ball. Is it nerve-wracking? Uh, how do you block all that out knowing that they're just waiting for your connection and then everyone's going to start yelling? Well, it can be distracting for sure. Um, they try to you know, quell that as quickly as they can because it's not really helpful for the competition. I mean, I, I watched a little bit of the U.S. Open tennis the other day and they're yelling and screaming before the serves. And yeah. they finally told them to calm down because now you're interfering with, with the – players and the way they're able to play and that's golf now other sports of course BYU football the, the louder the better yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's part of it there it's part of absolutely. it it's part of the game so d- describe to us it's not it's not easy we know that to win on on the PGA tour how help us understand just how difficult that is well um that's a good good point I I've won five times on the tour so I played what 29 years or so (laughs) that's not a very good ratio but I can tell you that uh, just getting your first one is huge and getting over the hump and you always want to do that and I know unfortunately you read the press every week and so and so hasn't won a tournament he's won a lot of money and done very well of course and has never gotten over the hump and tasted that victory but once you do it it seems to get a little bit easier so what's the feeling like when you have tapped in for a win and the cameras are waiting for you the reporters standing there on CBS waiting for you to walk over. What's that feeling like? I suppose the answer to that question is depends on the stage. If you're making a putt to win it, you're euphoric. You feel like a, a space shuttle blasting off into outer space. Yeah. If you've got a three or four shot lead and you're coming in. You're just nervous to get it home and hopefully you get on a regulation and get your putt up close to the hole. You can tap in and it's more relaxing. But uh, So is it surreal or is it like I just beat everybody? It's surreal, I think. Um, it's it's a little bit of both, I suppose. Uh, clearly, you're, that's your goal. You want to get in that hunt and feel those. As Tom Watson used to say, if I can't get any saliva in my mouth, that's usually a good sign. <laughs> <laughs> that's the true sign of, so, of, of it's on, right? Yeah. So, so your nine professional wins, five on the PGA Tour, including the Bay Hill Classic and the Buick Open. Uh, Tiger Woods came on tour in 96, right after you finished tie for 13 at the U.S. Open. So, so your career, like it spanned pre-Tiger and then all of Tiger, really. Um, in what ways did you see him change the game of golf? Well, he brought a lot of diversity to the game, I thought. You know, you could just tell the galleries were full of uh, all kinds of ethnic uh, diversity, and that was great to see. Uh, you know, he brought a magnetism to the game. Uh, his, his heroics were you know, indescribable, really. Uh, he uh, hit the ball a long way. He had all the facets of the game. His short game was impeccable. He could 
he seemed like he never missed a putt. And I think Hale Irwin said he, he putted unconscionably, I think is the quote he said <laughs> at one point. So, I mean, it, it just was, it was exciting. And we knew he was coming. I saw him at the Masters when I was there, when he was just a 18 or 19 year old. And uh, where they told me he hit the drive, for, for instance, on number two there, par five. He said he hit nine under the green. Everyone's like, what? How's that possible? There's no way. <laughs> <laughs> well, then they said at the BYU Cougar Classic, which he participated yeah. in, you know, Riverside Country, he be sitting three wood on the 16th green. So... I'd never gotten to the bunker with a driver, so I mean that was pretty eye-opening to me. And when I when I saw some of the, you know, the results of where he was placing the ball, he obviously had a super talent that was un, un, unmatched. But. What was it like when you're grouped with him? Um, and again, uh, he's just coming on, but but he started winning. Uh, we, I was a reporter in Vegas at a, when he won Vegas. His very first, the Las Vegas Invitational was his first win. Then he goes over to Phoenix and hits all in one or something. It was just, yeah. but but when. Uh, most everybody in the world will never be opposite Tiger Woods in a grouping in a tournament. But you have. What's it like? Well, it was the final round of the U.S. Open at uh, oh, Olympia man. Fields in Chicago, <laughs> your, one of your favorite towns. <laughs> and it was uh, the, you know, the Sunday round, and I got on the first tee, and he was very cordial. Tiger's a gentleman to play with, truly yeah. is. He's very aware of the distractions, all of his followers. And on the first tee, I can tell you, there must have been 50 cameras lined up power winders and you know, every time he, he took his pencil and put it in his pocket you know the power winders are firing so it was clear that it was going to be uh, an exceptional day for me to, to witness and uh, you know he didn't play his best that day but he had some shots that under you know that kind of u.s open challenge were hard to forget uh, the one that came to mind was a 17th hole par three it was about 240 yards he had a four and was into the sun and no one could see it, but it landed about six feet from the hole and the whole place just erupted down there. It sounded like a, you know, BYU touchdown last uh, Saturday night. So. But now well, you're beating him. And so what, what, uh, he's got the pressure of all the cameras and all that stuff. <laughs> and you're over there, <laughs> you're over there having a better day. Um, is that weird? No, you know, he had an off day, I think, that day. I don't, I don't remember the result, frankly. But, uh, as I say, he was just a, a gentleman every time I had a chance to play with him and, um, he comported himself, you know, with great distinction, and you know he could, he understands what he what he means to the game of golf. And I was just really really impressed, and always had been the way he operates himself. I was at the Masters this last year, and uh, we followed Tiger a little bit. I don't, you know, he had just come back from the injury. He wasn't a hundred percent healthy, obviously. When he's trying to come up the hill, as you finish, you come up the hill uh, at Augusta Steve National. Hill. It's 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 not easy to walk it. Not especially not four days in a row, right? Um, and on a bad wheel, but uh, the crowds were just ridiculous and um, just swarming around and running and trying to, you know, just get a peek. I, I can't imagine how difficult that would be to focus and try to play golf with all of that going on around you. How does how has he done it for all this time? Well, it started early for him, didn't it? I mean, we won the three junior titles, U.S. juniors, and then he went on to win the U.S. amateur three times in a row. When it was he, he had to deal with all of that at a very early age. And I think uh, skill to do comes from doing, and I think that's how he was able to handle it. And his father, of course, is documented. He was yeah. influential in the, getting him to understand pressure and dealing with it and being able to perform under those circumstances. So, PGA and Champions Tour golfer and Provo resident, and our friend Dan Forsman's on the Wise Guys. His BYU story is yes, coming up, and, yeah. it's, and it's awesome. But in 1997, so Tiger's the defending champion, and this isn't a Tiger Woods interview, but he's the defending champion at the Walt Disney World Classic. He's tied for 26th. You and David Duvall march into a playoff. You've got him on the ropes, but a chip shot goes wrong, and Duvall beats you by one shot. And afterwards, you were quoted in the New York Times as saying, my hands were shaking, before that chip, describe that pressure. That's <clears throat> good, good, good reminder. I, David Duvall was number one in the world at the time and had won just about everything going into the Disney that, that fall. Um, we got in the playoff and uh, the pin was back left on kind of a hogback green. And, and the, if you know anything about uh, Florida, they have this wiry Bermuda grass. And my ball had just trickled over the fringe into the back corner. It was no more than 15 feet from the flag, but I was in this really thick bird's yeah. nest lie, and I didn't know how to play the shot. I didn't know if I'd lob it when I was hard and try to flop it, or if I could just get the leading edge underneath the ball and kind of get it skidding. So I went to the ladder, and it came out soft and didn't get there, and I missed the putt for par. So mm. he was able to defeat me with a par of his own. So, so were you shaking? 
Yeah, I was. Was there that kind uh, of pressure? I mean, it's just the two of you, the gallery, the world <laughs> watching, and you've got a chip shot that you're not sure how it's going to go. Yeah, my kids over there saying, oh, I'd like to have you get a hold of that Mickey Mouse trophy, too. They were pretty young, <laughs> so it was going to be pretty exciting. But, no, I was nervous only because I, I, I didn't make a very good decision. I was kind of caught between any time yeah. you do that in golf or anything in life. Uh, it's hard to, you know, you got to be firm in your decision-making, and I, I, I kind of just got a little bit flustered, I suppose. One of the other things we noticed is that David Duvall's check for winning that was $270,000. That's what it was. Tony Finau... On the other hand, he just won $1.5 million the other day for winning this year's 3M Open, or a few weeks ago. Next year, the PGA Tour will pay out $415 million in prize money. I mean, that's, it's, it's phenomenal where it's come. And, and that's not that many years that prize money's gone from two seventy dollars to $1.5 million. That $415 million in purses. H- how has golf gone from there to here in that short period of time? Well, that's a really good question. The irony of that statement you just made is that they're trying to do that in order to prevent those players from leaving the PGA Tour and now mm. going on to live, which has seems to have an abundance, uh, endless supply of money. Um, good question. I, I think golf has been through the years, it's had this natural progression with the great stars of the past. You know, you go to Billy Casper, to Jack Nicklaus, to Gary Player, to on down the line, uh, Jack Nicklaus, obviously, and Arnold Palmer, my gosh, and you know, they built this reputation and this ability to sort of uh, elevate the game of golf in the world of sport and uh, in terms of really appealing to, to a commercial side as well. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, the, the uh, you know, they do feedback on this, and a lot of people like to play golf. You know, the elder, older people enjoy the get chance to get together, as we did recently when you all yeah. played together. And I, I, I don't know if I should take it. Fact, he impressive. said the older people, <laughs> and then he said that's what we did. No, you not speaking old for you guys. Oh, I, we're old. But the dynamics I are. I'm just going to have to wrap nice nice my head around and, it. You know, drive we're not on the Champions nice. Tour, but we <laughs> no, are old. We are not. <laughs> but so. I think all of it together, and it has a good image, by and large. Uh, they play by the rules, and there's – strict rules and if you break a rule you have to generally typically call it on yourself and that's integrity i think that appeals to a lot of people and um guy would rather lose a tournament than win it knowing he'd broken a rule yeah and i think that is helpful and then you got some great stars i mean tiger woods my gosh and rory mcelroy and uh, ernie Ells and phil mickelson before them i mean it's uh, it's fraught with a lot of excitement and the tournaments are exciting and, and let's face it we've all been there with that Four, five, six, eight, ten foot putt on 18 to, for all the marbles. To win the Masters, right? <laughs> right. That's and, what and we say. Just, you know, no matter who you are, we, in our own yep. worlds. And you did that the other day and knocked it right in the heart, remember? Yeah, it was. That was, was pretty sweet. That was pretty sweet, there, but I didn't have any cameras or yeah. gallery or I felt you, the prize money. You, you've, you've mentioned, um, so the competition, you win the prize money, you do all that, and you've mentioned a couple of times this live tour. And, you know, I'm a traditionalist, so I'm not a fan of it. Um you don't even have to go out and win to make hundreds of millions of dollars. There's not a cut. They're only playing three days. There's some things about it that that, that really bother me. But I'm I'm a I'm old school. I'm a traditionalist. What what's your thoughts on this new live tour? I feel much the same as you do. I, I think uh, tradition of the game has been you know you get out there, you go to the if you don't get your tour card, you get now you go to the corn ferry tour. Patrick Fishburne, this young BYU yep. star who's coming up, you know, we're pulling for him to get out there, and he's got the talent to be there. But, you know, and that's a, sort of the feeder tour to the PGA Tour. And then once you get out there, you you try to get out and get a tournament victory and get you, establish yourself and rise rise as your game rises. And um, that's kind of been the history. Now, here comes uh, oh, it's Mohammed bin Salon. Is that his MBS? Yeah, I do. I am. <laughs> <laughs> who brings all this money to the table. And yeah. Greg Norman, of course, who's obviously another superstar and took over the reins of that and brought out, gave it credibility. And now, you know, with what they've done, established in terms of the money they, they're paying those guys, I, it's hard for them not to say yes, I suppose. But I don't wonder, deep down, they're laying awake, they're just ready to sleep at night. They think about it. And they wonder if they're making the right choice, frankly. I, I know money's great for them and their families and all that, but... You know, it just seems anathema to what golf has been to this point. Let's go back a few years when golf was pure. Uh, you played your college <laughs> golf at Arizona yes. State. But you got a BYU story that forever links you with Hall of Fame coach Carl Tucker, Riverside Country Club, with your wife Trudy and with your boys Richard and Thomas. That gives you a BYU story, and that way makes it more than appropriate to be on the wise guys tonight. But tell us what happened. 
Uh, Carl Tucker, one of the great... Uh, and I was his paper coaches. boy during all this time. Were you? Yeah. I, I love Carl. Pro Daily Herald. Love, love, love Carl Did he tip Tucker. You? No, he didn't. Oh, shame on him. Seriously. <laughs> no golf balls? No nothing? No cougar Nothing, not a time. thing. Gee. Wow. I know. Well, that surprises me. He's very generous. <laughs> <laughs> no, he... Uh, obviously, well, I was at school at Arizona State at the time, and we were in the WAC. So we saw BYU's uh, golf, a very exceptional golf program. Oh, my gosh. And his tradition of coaching for the Cougars is... Goes without saying, it's phenomenal. Had a number of great, great players and great, great records, and won the NCAA the year one year at Stanford. I played in that that event that week, and uh, I think we finished third that year. But anyway, um, we I came up for the Pacific Coast Amateur Golf Tournament here at Riverside Country Club. Right. We were the host of the tournament that year, that the state that hosted, and Lynn Bell was a good friend of my my wife Trudy's father, Lum Holly. He was one of the founding members out there at Riverside, and. And the, he was an elder gentleman. This one fellow named Jim Frost came from Seattle area, from the Washington contingent to play in the tournament. And he was had a heart condition. He was worried about the altitude and the heat. So he thought he was going to maybe be susceptible to some kind of a heart condition. And so Lynn Bell, the, the uh, tournament director, asked Lum if his daughter would come out and drive his cart for the, for him. Because in the USGA rules, you can't drive your own golf cart and play in the tournament. So sure enough, she agreed to it. And she came out and drove the cart for uh, Jim Frost. And on the 10th hole, I saw Coach Tucker there, and I'd known him from the, yeah. the days with the WAC and the golf we played in my freshman year. And he, he said, hi, Trudy. And Trudy was taking a tennis class from him that summer. And so he said, you know Dan? And she said, no, well, we didn't meet his group. But I said, oh, it's nice to meet you. I, frankly, candidly, I thought it was just an older guy dating a younger girl. You know, we see that a bit. <laughs> yeah, times, right. In the world, the golf and anywhere. But uh, just a charming young lady. And afterward, I um, you know, found out it wasn't, she wasn't dating him. And uh, I had a chance to... She invited us, my friend and I, over to their home in Springville for a hamburger and showed us uh, Hobble Creek, which was yeah. gorgeous. Oh, a Built gem. Canyon there. She wanted to show some of the sights, and we went up and saw Bridalville Falls. and Just was as sweet as could be, just showing us around. And, and it was really uh, at that point that, you know, sort of sparks sort of, sort of started. So, <laughs> so this golf event uh, and this chance meeting on the 10th hole, uh, and, and Carl introducing the two of you. And um, so you, you marry, you join the church, Jesus yeah. Christ of Latter-day Saints. Uh, two kids, been married how many years now? My wife should tell me this. But <laughs> <laughs> so, it's, uh, well, let's see, 82, I guess it was. So what's that? 30 or 40. Calculator. 40-something. <laughs> 40. Long, long feels time. Like, feels like newlyweds. Really like newlyweds. Newly newly good answer. Good save. Yeah, thank you. Um, all because of the great game of golf. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, because you're just the you're just the kid in Tempe exactly. doing your thing, and now you're up in Provo for this thing. And isn't it interesting as you go back and connect the dots of your life, how it all came to be? Incredible. It's uh, yeah, tender mercies, I think, uh, Dave. Uh, you know, I well, I've never been to Utah. It was a gorgeous state. Couldn't get over it. The people were wonderful. The tournament was uh, a great success. I didn't play particularly well, but I, I, you know, I wouldn't win the tournament, but I won a beautiful young lady's heart. You won a wife. Yeah, that's, that's, you so got that, that going for you. <laughs> We're not going to call Trudy a trophy wife. <laughs> no, no, but, no, I don't know. But, <laughs> but uh, yeah, you guys um, and, and Trudy and Dan got married the year before we did. We're at 39 yeah. this year. Is that right? And, and now Brenda and Trudy and Dan and I right? hang out at the pool together. So, <laughs> so. well, it's, it's, it's awesome. Um, and, and, uh, it's just great. It's just great how 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 golf uh, has done that for you, and and because of golf, we all hang out now. And uh, because of golf, uh, your wife and my wife are conspiring to cut down a tree near our house, which <laughs> oh, I like. Man. Which uh, <laughs> every day I get to see the trees up. I go, well, they weren't together last night, so the trees still. Up. <laughs> but uh, but it is fun how uh, relationships and lives are brought together. When a few moons ago, uh, we were. You're in New York. I'm yep. growing up in Orem. Sports, You're in Arizona. Sports really brought all of us together. Yeah, and, and sports is w woven into the fabric of of all of our society, which is really really cool. Yeah. Um, well, you guys are gems. I just want to say I've enjoyed your show. I, I love After Further Review as well. It's amazing what you guys do. Uh, it's really you're kind of a BYU guys. fan now too. Yeah. Right? I know you're a Sun Devil, you but, the, but there's room for you. both. Quick story, you got a sec? Yeah, we got yeah. it. We got all night. Okay, uh, Baylor fans sitting right in front of us. Last, I went with my daughter-in-law's father, Lynn Hart, and yeah. we went to the game, and the Baylor fans sitting right in front of us, and they had the Baylor. I said, you folks from Texas? Yes, we are. And I said, how do you ever been to Utah? No, we never have. So how how you enjoying it? Oh, it's just been unbelievable. We love it here. Is, is it always like this? You know, the, the 
you know, the whole exciting. environment, oh, right? Oh my gosh, I said, yeah, well, it pretty much is. I mean, this is kind of the Cougars. And he said, <laughs> I got to tell you, when they came down to, to uh, Waco last year, they had more fans there than we did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, the end was end result. Great game, and the guy was obviously disappointed. But I said, you know what? Hey, you guys, you should be proud. Your team was great, and uh, you know, the Cougars got you this time. But uh, he said, wow, this is this has just been an incredible experience. He really couldn't say enough about it. And I thought yeah. it was really cool. That is cool. That is cool. Now they're playing Oregon uh, on Saturday. So roll out three keys for the Cougars. Yeah, to we're win. asking everybody for the three keys to a Cougar win. Then we got five quick questions for you. Well, that defense was incredible. BYU defense, I thought, yeah. was amazing. Uh, Jaron Hall looked to me when he gets the time to throw and those receivers, he's pinpoint. But the running game needs to maybe get a little, little yeah, more. Yeah, they got to run the ball. So, so get nice, uh, nice. So they continue to play defense the way they did. Jaron uh, throw the ball, but add a running game to that. And then uh, I think they, got and then they, come, they come out of Oregon with a win. Yeah. I like it. So. Are you ready for five yep. questions? Yes, sir. These are rapid fire. You've, you've heard these because you were here when we and you've and he listens to our show. show. Yeah, I love so, your show. So, but we we changed the last couple to be more specific for it. so so okay. favorite sports. Hang movie. on before we get there. Corey Yoshimura oh. from Japan wants to know favorite Masters memory and thoughts on the changes to eleven at Augusta. Oh, because Cor- by the way, Corey, I, I've told you about Corey. Yeah, I've met him. Yeah, you met Great Corey, guy. so he's he's yeah, hey, super nice. So what do you think? I, he's running the PGA of Asia. Well, I, oof, that's a tough one. Probably Tiger's win w- along with Tiger and Jack. When Jack won in 86 and Tiger's win his first time, those two are ex- beyond memorable for me. What about your favorite? My favorite? Memory at the Masters when you're there playing. When I won Bay Hill, it got me the chance to play at uh, Augusta for the first time. And then Mr. Palmer said to me at the presentation of the trophy. Mr. Palmer. said, Dan, I'd like you to join me for a practice round at Augusta on Tuesday at 9.30 in the morning. Oh, wow. I said, Mr. Palmer, I'll be there. <laughs> and That's I, I pretty I never amazing. forget it. We went around, and they loved him like nobody oh. has ever been loved. And he was as gracious and as kind to everybody and signed autograph. He had pen marks all over his arms and shirts. And he just he was just the classiest guy of all time. It was really memorable. That's really cool. Mr. Palmer. So you that so to get to the match the first time you won Bay Hill, which is Arnie's tournament. Yep. And then he practiced round with you and your first yeah. Oh, that's very that's cool. Unbelievable. That's a great memory. Yep. All okay. right. So oh, and then he said, What about the changes to eleven? Oh, eleven, yeah. Oh, it's too long. It's too, it's too long, long for me. <laughs> yeah. It's they not made too it long. longer. Oh, Corey's gosh. a long ball hitter, so it's okay with Corey. Yeah, yeah. And the guys like Hideki's his boy and the oh, and uh, and Corey. Corey, you gotta remind me of the of the new amateur, the young guy that's coming up over in Japan that is like when we were following him around, I can't believe it. he was out hitting Brook he was out hitting Brooks oh. Kepka. And he kept saying, Man, Brooks hits it long. There and is right we're there. Saying, Kita yeah. Nakajima. K- Keita Nakajima. Oh, yeah. Keita Nakajima. So so Keita was out driving Brooks. But then when we talked to Kata, he was like, man, Brooks hits it far. And we're all going, but you hit it farther. He, he's not used to having anybody be anywhere near him. He's a phenomenal player. That's, that's a guy to watch for. Kata Nakajima is Corey's wonder boy is that's that coming Tommy up in Japan. Is that Tommy Nakajima's son? I think it might be. Is it Tommy Nakajima's son, Corey? You have to answer us on that one, too. So. It's pretty, pretty But, but really pretty, amazing, amazing young player. Just turned pro oh, so this week. just turned pro. He's the top amateur not in, his in son. Asia. So. Not his son. Okay, cool. Okay. Thanks, Thanks for that Corey. info. Okay, now we'll get back to our yeah. our five questions. Favorite sports movie for Dan? Uh, it's got to be Field of Dreams. Nice. That's the that's first one that said that, and I love. It's like the Cubs won the summer at the Field of Dreams game. Yes, yeah. it's one of our only Way wins. I just, I just, lo- I just love how Cubs he win. says the memories will be so thick you'll have oh. to brush them away from your face. James Earl Jones. I like People that. will you come, will, Ray. People down. will come. You want to have a catch? Yeah. You can't that's have a tear one. of that one. That's, yep. that's, that's pretty. So favorite band or singer? Well, I always liked Chicago in high school. All right. Peter and Sinclair. I was walking down. They're still the singing. Yeah, they're, still, they're still singing today. Uh, favorite up. breakfast cereal? I'm a Cheerios original guy. And Interesting. Cheerios. Still, so after the, all these years. The only way you can make Cheerios good is you have to put like four tablespoons of sugar Seriously. on Seriously. Strawberries and blueberries. Legit. Okay, that'll, okay, with <laughs> that's strawberry. That's a healthy choice. That's, that's with strawberries and blueberries. Okay. All right, your favorite golf course in the world? Aside from Riverside Country Club? Aside from Yeah. That. <laughs> well, that's because of the company you keep over <laughs> that's there. That's exactly. Um, well, I've always said if I had one round to play, I'd want to play Pebble Beach. In nice. the whole world, Pebble yeah. Beach. Yeah. My, my, You've played my, there many times. I have. I've played yeah. there a few, and and I don't get to play in a tournament with, like you do, but it drives me nuts because it's the most beautiful golf course ever, and it takes six hours oh, to play well, that's, it. That's no fun. Drives me crazy. 
So, and so I just have to take a breath and take it all in and remind myself of how gorgeous it is out there. It is. So, most satisfying golf victory? Mm, good question. Probably the first one because you're just getting over the hump, you know, getting that. What was that? Was it the Honda? It was what the Quad was Cities Open. Quad and, Cities. And it's now the John Deere Classic. Okay. The Tour. Nice. And, uh, I, made a, I made about an eight-foot bogey putt. It was a tough finishing hole, pretty tight. And Bob Tway was on fire. He'd won four or five times that year. And I was playing with him on Sunday and uh, happened to knock that in to seal it. I won. It was pretty. That's sad. pretty cool. Oh, pretty good to see that ball disappear. Oh, oh my gosh! And the bumpiest screen it had Poe in it. It was all. So you know, the, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna give I'm gonna give you a sixth one because we're gonna still ask yeah. you this last one. But who's the f- your favorite? You you played with Arnie, so I'm just gonna assume that that was your 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 coolest person you've played mm-hmm. with. But who who's number two? Or maybe there is somebody that was was more fun to play with than Arnie, or was a cooler to you to play with. F- favorite playing partner of all time. Playing partner, well, Jack Nicholas, of course, was unbelievable. I'd have to say, I'd say the Golden Bear. The Golden yeah. Bear. Jack Nicholas. Yep. And he was I, nice. Incredible. Yeah. He's so focused. He, he's oblivious. I had a great story in Canada when we were playing there and he hit these shots and he was clanking them. He was getting pretty old. He's 46 or seven, or maybe eight or nine, whatever. But he'd never won the Canadian Open, been runner up six times, five or six or seven times. And, he, and it's of course he designed Glen Abbey up in Toronto, and he's clanking this wood in the middle of the river on the, about the 14th hole, and he, and he says to his caddy, Steve Nicholas, says, Steve, where's that ball? And he said, Dad, it's in the river. In the river? you got to be kidding me. That's unbelievable. You, know, you could tell it was yeah. in the river the moment he hit it. There was no way it was going to clear. <laughs> and so he just made double bogey there, and he was going to miss the cut, and he just, he just flipped a switch. And he got that laser focus. He birdies like the last four of the last five holes to make the cut on the nose or by one. <laughs> and he gets done. He sees the scoring table. He says, "Here, ma'am, take this ball. That's a collector's item." She says, "Oh, Mr. Nicholas, why is that?" He says, "That's the worst ball I've ever hit in my life. I'll never use that ball again." <laughs> in other words, it was the ball's fault. Yeah. It was the ball's fault. Oh ball. man, absolutely. I loved. I loved his last Masters win. That was epic. So pretty cool. Okay, la- you gonna give him the last one, Dave? Oh yeah, the bonus question: favorite two guys to play golf with. Blaine Fowler or Dave McCann? That's, that's, that's correct. Who else is so there? We had a bell would ring it. Yes, yeah, so good. But we hang out. You, you are uh, very patient with us as we play. and But we eat a lot of lunches and hang out, and it's, uh, it's first class. You guys are doing yeah, we, amazing. Hey, I just I love hanging out with Dan Trudy at the pool because that's just chill. When we're out on the course, I feel like i got to keep up with him, which is impossible because he kicked our butts on the back nine the last time we played. So are you th- birdie 18, though. That was I did birdie 18, yeah. which Are you nice. thinking you'll be out on the Champions Tour uh, next year? I might have a chance a couple of weeks at Pebble and okay. getting closer, but it's been and, hard and you, this year. I've been right on the edge of getting in. It's been a little bit frustrating. And you, and for people that don't know, you you had to come back from an injury of your own. You, you had a shoulder issue. Yeah. And had to have surgery, right? And then rehab that, and that's that's not fun at our age no. to try to come back from that and get back in professional golf. But you're you're right close to getting back in there, right? Yeah, injuries are hard. You know, it's uh, I don't know how you you know with your throwing that football if you get a shoulder that's oh. sore, boy. I tell you, golf's no different. You've got to get through that ball, and if you're flinching a little bit or you're not weak or you're weak and don't feel like yourself, it, it can be tough. <laughs> it can make it a lot harder. Well, the thing about the Champions Tour is. Uh, you got to be 50 or older to play on it, mm-hmm. and uh, and you play on it, which means you're in the top 80 or 90 golfers in the entire world who get a chance to play on the Champions Tour, and I think that's awesome because most everybody will, <laughs> will never come close, and so uh, if you get to Pebble Grade or into next week or into next year, but man, you... you you tee off in those things. You're still in the top 80 in the entire world of guys who are playing golf, uh, 50 and up. I think that's awesome. Speaking of the Champions Tour, um, BYU's own Joey Summerhays qualified yeah. again. He's playing this week in Sioux Falls. So all you BYU faithful. There you go. Sioux keep Falls. Summerhays, great, one of the great golf families of Utah. Oh, big so. golf family. Yep. Okay, so that's it. Was that, very, was that easier than you thought it was going to be? You guys are True professionals. You Come on. Very comfortable. We know your stuff. <laughs> Thank you. The great Dan Forsman. Dan, thanks so much. A for professional coming, golfer coming and, with us. and just first class human being. And so you're welcome on here anytime. Anytime. Thank you. Maybe and next next year, next summer when you're hitting the tour spots, maybe we'll do a remote as you're in Michigan getting ready for, you know, Wednesday's Pro Am. We'll get you on Wise Guys. We'll talk about the strategy. We'll give you some advice. Yep. 
calm your nerves. I'm gonna need some tips before that. Happens. Some tips. Yeah, you, you we'll give you tips. some tips. Don't, don't pay any tips attention to us, but we'll give you some. Tips from us. Sounds like great. Thank, All right. Thanks awesome. so much, Dan. Appreciate Thank you coming. Appreciate on. it.